Back in August, I showed you guys the new Nitrate version of Film Convert for Premiere Pro and how much of an improvement that was over the previous version. But the most asked question on that video was, what about Resolve? Well, I finally got my mitts on the beta for Film Convert Nitrate for DaVinci Resolve. Let's get undone. Gerald Undone. He's crazy. What's happening, everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and I really, really, really want to zig a zag ah. All right, so let's jump straight into Resolve, and I'll show you the new plugin. All right, so let's start off by just showing you the basic way to apply it in Resolve in case you haven't done this before. We're still going to use our node based grading system, but we're going to apply it like an OpenFX plugin. So I'm just going to make a second and third node here so that we can talk about a couple other things. But I'm going to start by applying it to the second node. That way if you're used to making corrections prior to applying things like in the first node, you can still continue to do this. Although to be honest, I haven't really found it to be that important to do that with Film Convert. I don't usually need to use like Lift Gamma Gain or whatever on the first node because the tools that are available in Film Convert are usually enough to get the image exactly the way that I want it to look with just a single node. But you can use your regular node-based workflow if you want. All right, so let's go down here to the effects. And at the bottom, we're going to see under Film Emulation, Film Convert. In this case, it's Nitrate 3.00 Beta 3. Probably won't say all that when you get the final version. And we'll just drop that into the second node here. Now, a couple things happened at once. First of all, you'll notice that now there is an overlay that wasn't available in, you know, the Premiere Pro version and other versions. But the tools in the overlay will match the tools that you would find in the Premiere Pro version. So you've got the uh, Film Grain Response Curve, which is exclusive to nitrate. You've got the film response curve and then you've got the color wheels. Now you can get rid of this if you want. Just down here you can turn off and turn it back on as open effects overlay and you can also move it around and you can change it from sort of a dark mode to a light mode depending on what works better for you. And if you use a larger display mode like say this then you can actually expand it by dragging in the top corner and then you could say put it over here and then you could adjust the curve of your image and see what you're doing quite easily that way. I think this is pretty great for, for some aspects. I don't need it for others, but I really like it. But alternatively, if you don't like to use that overlay, you can still use the regular integer and slider controls that you'd probably be used to. Down here under overlay parameters at the bottom of the film convert panel is the wheels and the grain curve. Now the film response curve isn't controlled in here because you can't really control a curve without a graphic interface, but the color wheels can be controlled the shadows, the midtones, the highlights for the lift, the shadow angle, and the shadow amount, and then like gamma, midtone, angle, and amount. And then down at the grain curve, you can also control the way that the film grain is dialed in, and that's something that's new with nitrate that you might like. And the other main difference with nitrate is the inclusion of Cineon. Now, I highly recommend that you go and watch my previous video if you want to learn more about that. But the basic idea is that you no longer lose the log gamma encoding when you apply Film Convert because nitrate is now equipped to deal with your log profiles, including HLG. You just have to choose the matching camera configuration. So, for example, this clip here was shot using the Sony a7 III and using S-Log2. So we'll choose choose camera profile and then choose Sony and the a7 III and then S-Log2 S gamut. That's the one that I used. And then we click apply and then right away we can see that the image just comes to life. I'll show you a little before and after. And it already looks really great and we haven't really even tweaked anything. That's sort of the, the basic nature here of Film Convert Nitrate is that you can make things look great super quickly and there's so many different camera packs and you can just download them for whatever camera you're using and just make all your stuff look great. Uh, but basically we'll go over a couple settings here. So the main one is that you're going to want to choose your film stock. So let's go ahead and choose the Fuji 8543VD one here because I think that one looks great. And then it's pretty straightforward from here on out, but we'll just go over sort of a basic grade so we can talk about the different functions and how they work. So from the top, this is where you can do your exposure and your white balance corrections as well as saturation. And they're pretty powerful tools and I like the way that they look. As I mentioned the Premiere Pro version, I often will use the temperature here just to add sort of a fun creative look to it because the way the white balance is controlled in nitrate is really pleasing and it doesn't give you this kind of like weird Ugh, it's too warm it's gross they seem to always look nice let me show you an example here so as you can see if we increase the temperature we still get this nice look it just gets warmer and it doesn't really get to the point of where it starts to look like we just made everything yellow and gross i think that it looks good all the way through so let me just go ahead and undo that and then let's talk a little bit about exposure here because as you can see the exposure compensation is set to zero but if you look at our waveform our image is pretty nicely balanced out in the waveform now. But if we take this away and we look at the waveform, you can see that we're exposed down here. So the default setting for Film Convert I found, especially when dealing with S-Log, is to expose to that middle kind of like 40, 45% level. And then when you apply it, like you can see here, it might look like this is dark and you might consider this to be underexposed when it comes to maybe you like to expose S-Log to the right, like I made a whole video on that. But it's no big deal if you don't, I'll show you a slightly overexposed clip and then bring it down in a minute and you can see it works just as well. 
So here we go. So that's exposure, temperature, tint's the same thing. And then saturation, that's obviously to taste. Sometimes I like to put in just maybe 10% more and I find that it still looks really great. And then we'll move down here. Now film color and Cineon to print film, these ones are specific to the fact that it's detected that we're using log and it's doing Cineon settings. But if we were to play with a clip that doesn't have that, so let me jump over to this clip, which is not a log clip. And we'll do the same thing. We'll throw a film convert on here and I'll get rid of the overlay. Now, if you look at this one, the options are instead film chroma and film luma, and they have a slightly different effect. So if we adjust the film luma and adjust the film chroma, we can see it's more like color and a little bit like contrast. But if we switch back to the one that we were editing, now we have film color and sending on to print film. And if we take away the print film thing, it almost looks like we're going back to our log image. And that's the big advantage of nitrate here is that it really knows how to handle a log image and give you some great results. Now the film color, I was told by the Resolve team that they're probably gonna take it out because it's not really important for log and it's more important for sRGB. So when it detects log, it might not be there. But I have found that you can tweak it a little bit to sometimes to some pleasing results. If I slam it all the way to the left here, you can see what it does left and right. It, it kind of adds this almost like moody kind of teal aspect to it, which maybe you wanna throw a little bit in, you know, you can like tweak it back a little bit if you'd like the way that it looks. But I'm just, I don't think you're supposed to, but sometimes it kind of works out. Anyway, moving further down, we have our grain settings. Now, sometimes, you know, for YouTube and for compressed formats, you might not want any grain. And then we have a really easy control with grain strength. We can just put that down to zero and the grain's gone. But if you do want to use the grain, then you can manipulate it here. And then further down, like we were saying, we have those grain controls. And then also you have the overlay that you can put on. And then your grain curve here can be adjusted based on, you can see this is actually a nice little GUI here. You've got your blacks, your shadows, your midtones, your highlights, and your whites. So if you wanted to put a lot more grain in the shadows, then you can just jack that up there. And then you'll see more grain in the shadows and maybe none in the highlights. So you have a lot of customization on your film grain here. And I think that's probably one of the main, you know, features of nitrate, but I find that even if you don't care about film grain, you can still get some really great quick grades with it that make it worth it even if you're not interested in the grain part of film emulation. Now the last major control I would say to get a finished grade would be either you can use levels is one option they have here, but then you also have the color wheels, which again, you can control either in the overlay or here you can use them just with sliders if you just wanna do like a simple lift gamma gain thing. So maybe I'd look at this image here and I'd think oh, I just wanna give it a little bit more pop, a little more contrast. So maybe I would go to the highlights and up the gain just a little bit and then go to the shadows and lower the lift a little bit. And that'll just make it a little bit more punchy than it was before. But now let's use that on a clip that could maybe use it a little bit more beneficially. So let's jump over to this clip, which is quite dark. And same thing, we're just gonna drag the nitrate effect onto our node and I'll turn off the overlay. So let's go ahead and choose our camera just like we did before. Now you can just copy the node over from the previous one if you wanted, and then that would already be set up. We're just gonna go through this for the sake of doing it. So A7 Mark III and then S log, nope, S log two with S gamut, click apply. So there, our colors are there, but we can't really see anything because this image was shot underexposed, it's a bit too dark. So now we can see what that exposure does. So first we'll just increase the exposure. Now obviously if we bring the exposure all the way up, then our noise floor is gonna go up and we're gonna have that problem, but that's one of our options. So we'll bring up the exposure to sort of a reasonable level, but we're obviously gonna have to deal with our, our lift there if we want to you know, handle how dark those shadows are. So let's jump down here. I'm gonna choose, let's choose the same film stock that we did before, just for the sake of comparing them. And then we'll move down here and our lift now, we can increase that and we'll try to manage it against the noise of this shot and maybe a little bit more, just a little bit to the gamma. And this is one where now if you wanted to add some more contrast but you didn't want to affect the lift gamma gain that you just set, then you could use that response curve which shows up in the overlay here. So let me pull that up and we'll go to the second tab which is the response curve. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand this so that I can see a little bit better what I'm doing. And we could bring our shadows down a little bit and our highlights up. And a shot like this is one where I find that the saturation control usually pays off and again delivers a really nice result. So yeah, that's pretty interesting now. I find that the color is really interesting and everything's pretty smooth the way that it's rolling through. And we do have a little bit of red clipping, but I don't think that it's that noticeable in because of how out of focus it is. So I think that we're good like that. Now I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do the shot, my regular shot of me here. And I've already done this one, but I just wanna show you like how quick it is to get a reasonably decent look. You're actually looking at it now. This whole video has been graded using Film Convert Nitrate. But the way that I did this shot here, which was based on the previous video, is I just chose Blackmagic Design, the Pocket 4K, and Film. And this brings up another point. 
Obviously, if you're doing something like the 4K with RAW, then again, you probably don't need a multi-node setup. You can just use your one node here and then go over to your RAW processing and it's the same. And then as you can see over here, everything is pretty much neutral. Although I did increase the saturation a little bit and I did shift the temperature a little bit, 10 more to the warm, because again, I kind of like the way that the warmness looks in nitrate. And remember I said about that film color thing, this is what it looks like at 100. And I just brought it down to 66 just to test it around. And I thought it kind of looked pretty cool. So I left it like that. And I turned the grain off because normally I don't have grain when you look at my shot here. And then I just made a couple adjustments to the wheels because I find that if you shoot something not using film emulation and then you start using film emulation that you find, you know, your blacks are really black and you have a lot of contrast and a lot of spread there. And it might be when I was trying to make something, you know, not too dissimilar to my regular look, I had to lift up the shadows push down the gamma and the gain a little bit, just basically sort of reduce contrast in order to make it look how my shot normally looks. And this was the finished result. So that's before, obviously that's an ungraded log image. And here's what it looked like after. And I think it looks great. It looks different though, a little bit than my regular shot. And that's because film convert will always look a little bit different. It's, you know, it's a fun creative way going about grading, but it does have a different sort of vibe to it. And that's important to know that it's very difficult to match, I find, something graded with film convert with something graded not with film convert because the styles of processing the image are very different and you can always sort of tell that they have like a different vibe to them. So you can definitely create some fun, awesome looks with film convert, but just don't necessarily try to match them to sort of your typical grading by numbers, log style color correction. They will have a different look. Both are good though. All right, and then let's just do a couple other clips here. Uh, this is one that I thought looked great. I'd show this in my previous Polar Pro video. Normally I'd done it in a completely different way. The only difference is that I had some mid-tone detail, so to show you how you can add a node on and correct it afterwards. So this was a simple one. I ended up using the same 8543 VD. I find that for the stuff that I shoot that that film stock is very similar to the way that I would go about it anyway. So it's an easy transition one for me. And this is one where I was talking about where I exposed brighter. So you can see that I brought the exposure down by minus 2.6. So if we reset that, it just looks insane, obviously, when we apply film convert. Now when I take it away, it just kind of looks like a somewhat exposed to the right image, which is good when you're trying to reduce noise on S-Log. But you don't need that to the same extent for film convert. So when I put that on, obviously it's crazy bright, so I had to bring the exposure down. But this isn't an issue at all. If we come in here and look at it, we still get that same excellent noise performance because we shot it to the right and then brought the exposure down and there wasn't really any consequences to that. Now in here though, I would like to show you something. So if we add another node, now we can go in and do other creative corrections after that. So when I did this one originally, I had, I think, increased the midtone detail quite a bit. So let me just put that to the extreme, put it at 100 just to see. And yeah, we get a really nice result. So this is really bringing out the wood grain. Let me show you before and after. And it can come in right after the film convert node and it's really easy and it integrates really well. And I'm really happy about that. So that's pretty much it. As I said in my previous video, I really like Nitrate. I think it's a big step forward for Film Convert, and it's just so easy to get a really pleasing but creatively distinct look quickly, which definitely makes it worth a purchase in my opinion, especially if you like to shoot sequences that you want to make look more filmic. This is the Windows version you saw here, but the Mac release, I'm told, would be identical. And there's also going to be a Final Cut Pro version coming out Q1 2020, but the Resolve version of Nitrate should be available in the next couple weeks, so keep an eye out on their website. I'll put a link to it in the description below. But overall, the beta works great, which is awesome because after using this plugin for Premiere Pro and realizing how good it was, the only thing I wanted to know was when can I get it for Resolve. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video entertaining or at least helpful. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, then you probably do your color grading in Microsoft Paint. All right, I'm done. <laughs>